Uh, this is a nationwide survey to understand how consumers respond to companies that show a commitment to diversity and inclusion. Well, listen, if you look at our Twin City corporate community, they're all into di diversity and inclusion. And, and some of them to a point where they're not even doing the multicultural marketing anymore, where all their dollars now are diversity and inclusion. Well, will that change? I, I think it will. I, you know, our, our, uh, I had a previous sponsor that uh, is doing a lot of diversity and inclusion now, and they wanted me to include a diversity and inclusion workshop along with their sponsorship, and I had to refuse to do that. This is the marketing conference. That's who we are. But that doesn't stop us from finding out Listen to this, insights include the impact on consumer loyalty and purchase intent. This is the next report here. Now, aren't we all interested in finding out that diversity includes, what does it mean? Because believe you me, and I, I might be talking out of line here, but not all these corporations that are doing it because it's the right thing to do. It's, it, it was the right move to make. But let's find out from Carlos Yanez He's going to present that report right now. Let's find out what happened with those dollars. It's going to take us right into the noon lunch with uh, Amalia. So, Carlos, come on back up. Thank you, Rick. Okay, so I will be presenting another report. And this was something, actually, that we put out last year. And uh, similar to the consumer uh, sentiment research that we've been doing, it's probably something that we're going to be tracking over over time. So as Rick mentioned, diversity and inclusion, that's become a very, very important term definitely for corporate America. So this was also fielded very similarly to the consumer sentiment study in which we uh, fielded, I think it was a base of 1,500 total. We do breaks by Hispanics, by African Americans, and by Asians, and also whites. Uh, we focus on 18 to 64. Um, I do know one person mentioned um, the Gen Z group. And I can absolutely tell you that perceptions are quite different for that age group. So we, we do look at the 18 to 24, which, which technically still falls under the Gen Z uh, category. And so this was fielded last year. This was fielded in April of last year. Um, and we will be uh, fielding that a second time. So maybe we'll be back to show you how that looks. Uh, trending wise okay so we're gonna jump right right into it so the, the the question is very straightforward so what does diversity and inclusion mean to you and we had these these several options that are shown here and it's racial equality so that was mentioned by most uh, people but then also you see things like uh, let's see gender equality generational equality, um, LGBTQ ranked last, but you will see that among the LGBT segment in our sample, they ranked that first. So that obviously makes, makes sense. So it really is about racial equality more than anything else. But as you will see, the differences that we see are more driven by generation than by race and ethnic background. So this is a lot of data that we're showing you here. But younger generations are more likely to see gender equality as an example of D and I. And as I mentioned, we, we break this data out by a bunch of different variables. So we look at it by, by income and by gender and by race and ethnicity. Um, and this is really what drives the differences. It really is a generational thing. So, Younger segments are definitely more um, aware of how gender identity is changing. Um, I, I can see it with my own daughter. She's, uh, she'll be 15 soon. And the way she looks at gender is completely different than, than I did, and certainly than my parents did, who were born in Mexico and have, I mean, very different views about marriage and, and, and all of that. And I, I'm sure you see it also, whether it be with your family, in media, 
Uh, gender is fluid. Gender is, is something that is constantly changing. And we, and we see it here. Now we're looking at it by, by gender here. You don't see quite a significant of, of differences. There are a few things that do uh, stand out. So women are more likely than men to see differently abled equality and LGBTQ plus as an example of diversity and inclusion. Asian Americans are more likely to see racial equality as an example of DNI. Hispanics and non-Hispanics whites are less likely to. So you'll see there are some uh, some significant differences there. We don't point out like the you know we don't do the up and down arrows and, and, and anything like that here. But you can see visually uh, there are some differences, not not too um, uh, you know the the differences are not as significant as, as we may have seen in, in the other research. Okay, so this is a very important question. So when a company makes a public commitment to diversity and equality, um, does that make you what? And so we had them choose from, from different options. And this is, I know it's really difficult to, to read this. Um, so the, the black uh, bar is, is saying that it's, they're much more likely to support this company. The, the darker blue, more, more likely to support this company. Gray does, uh, makes no difference and then the lighter shades, uh, they're less likely to. So as you can see, um, most people definitely uh, think of it in a very positive way. So they are definitely more likely to support a company that shows D DNI. Now, one thing that I can, that I can uh, mention that wasn't part of this survey, but we've seen it over and over and over, is that it's about authenticity. Now that, that word is kind of vague. What does authenticity mean? And the best way that, that I can answer it is, is people know when something is authentic when they see it. It's not something that can be easily described. We've tried doing that in surveys. We even try to do it in, in focus groups. And we, gen, we tend to get the same answers. We just, we, we just feel it. It's just a gut feeling. It, it comes off the right way. Um, it's a really tricky balance. We, we've done research, um, actually one of the more recent ones that we did was a children's clothing brand. And they were putting out um, clothing for a particular cause. And uh, some people loved it. They thought it was the greatest thing ever. You know, you're, you're thinking about our culture. That's, that's wonderful. Another set of folks in a different focus group, this is so obvious. This is, this is not what we want to see. We, we, we want to blend in with everybody. You don't, you don't have to make it so obvious. So for me, that's kind of a turnoff. So it's a really tricky balance, and it's about doing it authentically. And the one thing that I, that I can tell you is that consumers want to see a concerted effort consistently. So putting something out for Hispanic Heritage Month, let's say, great, that's wonderful. But do it over the course of time so that you develop the perception that you are serious about doing this and that you care about them. So it, it's, you know, that's one thing that we have found from several years of uh, research in this topic is that it's not something that's easily attainable. Authenticity is very difficult, but it's something that can be achieved over time. Okay? And a, as I mentioned as I'm walking through this, please, if you have any comments, any questions, by all means, feel free. Okay? So looking at that same question, um, age groups, so, let's see, gosh, it's really tiny font, but it's basically from younger to, to older. So the first bar is Gen Z, Millennials, uh, Gen X, and then uh, Boomers. Um, and you, you, you will see that the younger segments are more likely to say that they will support a company that um, is, is showing D, uh, DNI 
um, initiative. Gender, uh, we don't see quite as significant a difference, but um, you, you will see males are, are do, do say that they are more likely to uh, support a company. Uh, so that, that black bar that you see there is different. I don't know if it's a significant difference, but I do think that it is worth noting. Uh, but this difference is a little bit more subtle than, than, than some of the, of the other ones. Okay, here. Um, you mentioned that you are more likely to support a company that makes a public commitment. Um, so how do you show your support for that company? 49% social media. They put it out there. So that's free P PR that consumers are doing for you. Next up, uh, they spend more money at that store or buying that brand or, or going to the retailer. They go out of their way to go to a store that you have frequented. And then 31%, they would stop going to a store that does not publicly support diversity and inclusion. So that number is the lowest one that we see here, but that's a significant number. So three out of 10 uh, people that we spoke to told us if that company doesn't show that they support the DNI cause, I am likely to stop using that service, that company, going to that store. So that's a significant number. Quick question, Carlos. Yes. When you say store, is that a brick and mortar store versus online? Oh, I'm just being very general. It, it, could, be, it could be an online store, it could be brick and mortar, it could be a service. Um, it's kind of really everything. All encompassing. Yes, exactly. So this is looking at the same question by uh, different generations. So as you can see here, and I'm sorry, I'm having a difficult time seeing this, um, but you, you will see these two numbers, the 50 and the 58% up here, they, sh they share your, your support on social media. So not a big shocker, right? The younger generations are most likely to show their support by talking about it on social media. And that could be in a positive way or it could be in a negative way, right? If a company is, is, is making an, an effort but maybe are, are doing it in a very poor way, that stuff is going to go out there. And it's on social media, so it's PR, um, and it could have um, issues with that, with, with that brand. Um, let's see a little bit. Let's see this one. I go out of my way to go to a store that I've never frequented. You'll see this is higher for, for boomers, so it tends to be less likely with the younger generations. Um, and then those and the very bottom here, those that would stop going to a store that does not publicly support D and I, and you will see the Gen Z, 40%. It's lower for, for millennials, 31, 31, and, and 26%. So Gen Z, they're the ones that, that really play a significant role when it comes to developing a perception of a company, of a brand, of a store. Um, and as one person mentioned, that Gen Z group is significant because their perceptions are very different than those of, of Gen X and certainly boomers. Let's see. You mentioned you would like to support a company. Okay, so this is the gender differences here. Not, you don't see quite the same differences. Um, Social media, 52% men, 44% female. Uh, the big difference though, they spend more money at a store. Now here, what I'm thinking when, when I hear store, I do think more of a brick and mortar store. And I do think that that's what um, survey takers are probably thinking. So men are definitely more likely um, to spend more money at a store. And then those that would go out of my way to, to go to a store that I've never gone to, higher for, for females, 47% versus 40. And then those that would stop going to a store that do not publicly support DNI, uh, pretty similar, 29% versus 33%. Here we're looking at race and ethnicity. Um, so social media, and we know from other research that we've done, 
Hispanics tend to over-index when it comes to activity done on social media. They're just more active on it. Thus, to support a company, they do it on social media. They're more likely to than any other segment. Spend more money at the store. African, uh, uh, yeah, African Americans, 51%. That's higher than any of the other groups. So they really do put their money when they're about this. Did I say that right? <laughs> um, uh, they go out of their way to go to a store that they've never gone to before. You'll see that Hispanics are the least likely to, and the likelihood goes way up for the other three segments. And then at the very bottom, uh, people who, wouldn't, who would stop going to a store that doesn't show support, uh, fairly similar across the four segments. So really the, the big difference, social media, especially for Hispanics, and those that are willing to actually spend more, African Americans. Okay, here, so this was part of a different research study that we, that we did uh, with our uh, Connect tool. Um, so what this is showing, the percent that are likely to unfollow or to openly criticize a brand if they felt that their content was not authentic. 34% among everybody, but LGBTQIA, 51%. That's a huge, huge difference. Um, and that's, uh, that's higher than any of, of the other race and ethnic segments. Um, so that's something that really popped out for us. Like, wow, this is much higher than we would have thought. So obviously this segment is important. So here we're looking at the different, uh, again, race and ethnic uh, segments. I think we may have actually, oh yes, roughly how much more would you spend? No, actually, I think this is, I think we've already seen this, sorry. Yeah, I think we did. Okay, age and, uh, age and gender. So, again, you mentioned that you would spend more money at a store that publicly supports diversity and inclusion. Roughly how much more would you spend? And I'm thinking this is not the same thing. Yeah, this is not showing the correct thing. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, this was supposed to be, so one of the questions that we asked was how much more are you willing to spend? Um, which I realize is a very difficult thing for people to think about, right? Like how much more would I be willing to spend if a company showed that they really care about me or about other um, you know, people like me? Um, what, what we saw, and unfortunately it's not here, um, African Americans are willing to spend the most out of any segment followed by Hispanics, um, and also generational um, differences. So the younger folks are more willing to spend more if they see that there's a company that's actually trying to make a change for a you know, positive cause. Um, so, and I, and I realized this was sort of, you know, I kind of flew, flew through it, but this is really based on really just three or four questions that, that we asked. But what we found is really, it's, it's completely generational. I mean, that's what's really driving this. Um, and, and so I, I'm sure that, that you all, you know, if you're from this area, you, you definitely have sort of felt that, you have seen that. Um, but it is something that is becoming such an important part of the way people think about companies and about brands. And, but as I had mentioned previously, if it's not done right, it can completely backfire. We have seen that. And it's, it's one of those things where when we finish a, a research study, um, we try to make a recommendation as to what they should be doing. And that's one of the really big challenges that we have had as researchers, is to try to provide marketers with the right information so that they don't, they don't do it the wrong way where they don't fall f flat, right? And that's, that's a big, big challenge. It's a challenge for us, and we research these segments. So for companies and for brands that are not used to doing this, it's even more difficult. And so 
you know, there is no magic bullet, there is no magic formula as to how to do it. Just know that people know what authentic is when they see it. So that means it has to be done right. So about the elusive uh, authenticity situation, in my experience, it's uh, one element that needs to be there is representation in the teams doing the work. Mm -hmm. Executive teams, yeah. the leadership teams, the uh, at all levels really. And I could, I, I've worked with teams where we were lacking in some areas, and it's like, well, we're not ready. We 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 try, we try to do that without us understanding and and, and 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 having a colleague or a few colleagues in that group. We would miss the mark. It'll, they will feel like they're talking to about us, not to us. They're not exactly. us. Exactly. So that authenticity has to do with representation. Why our agenda has always been marketing is that you're going to learn just about as much from a marketing research study about people than you will at this diversity training, but you're not going to have that undertone. And that's important. Yeah. That, that's how important, yeah. That's how important uh, marketing research is because you're going to learn about all their sentiments and how they think and how they feel, right, Carlos? And, mm -hmm. and in the end, you're going to leave a, uh, a more, a, a more in tune person uh, on marketing and, or, or cultures, but there was never that unrest thing or that accusation yeah. type of a feeling. So I'm not saying this is going to disappear, but I think, it, I think what you've said here is driven by you know, millennials or the Gen X group, mm -hmm. they use the hell out of social media. And that group is a year or two away from paying taxes and getting a job and shutting up, okay? So, <laughs> well, well, I mean, we, well, it all happens, it all happens. But, 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 I, but, but I wanted to thank you. Yeah. Comment on what you just said. Yeah. Um, you know, it, the marketing programs that you've done, you've done a great job over the years, have just been less threatening to those yeah, of us yeah. that have been kind of on the other side of the threats. I can tell you right now, it doesn't do a lot of good to attack somebody when you're trying to convince somebody of something. Yeah, yeah. It does a lot better when you actually do it via, like your programs, which are marketing, and you show the cultural differences and you're not attacking somebody or ramming it down their throat. Yeah. Numbers don't lie, people do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to give people you a- People use numbers to lie, don't they? Yeah. yeah. I want to give you a hand, though, Rick, on, on the way you do it. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, it's good, and, um, and 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 I want to thank uh, think now, uh, as Rico mentioned, a lot of his information uh, that he that he's used, and, and, and not only Rico, obviously the whole uh, multicultural marketing industry, and so with that, uh, we we uh, annually have a. A multicultural Marketing Achievement Award that um, we have in the past uh, been able to uh, present it to uh, the leaders in, in multicultural marketing research. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, multicultural marketing industry, this isn't an old industry. This is a new industry. You, you can look maybe at late 70s, early 80s is when this industry still it took hold in this country. The very people that have set the guidelines for that industry have uh, put together the thoughts behind it, the questions, the capacity to advertise have been right here at our conferences. Um, and we're, we're proud of that because um, if you look at the history of this multicultural industry, you're all part of it. Uh, there'll be some companies, let, let's take Old National Bank, for, for instance. Why not? You know, they're probably new. They're new at starting multicultural outreach. Sure, and, and you know, Bay Equity, the people here. We have our, we have our friends from the, from, the, from the arts groups here. We have, you know, the Ordway is here, the Schubert Club, and, um, they're very interested in outreach. How do we do it? Why? Because if we look at those wonderful, the wonderful art community and uh, theater community we have in the cities here, you know, our communities aren't part of it yet. 
It's important. It's a, it's a wonderful um, asset we have here in the cities. So I want to thank you uh, and, and all your team, because it's a marvelous team, uh, for you know putting together these studies because just this alone, uh, if we care about you know how we move on as a as a as a business group, you know this is this has been a a, a real on top of the unrest has been a real uh, uh, has a, has a real capacity to maybe take away the dollars from your companies that would go to marketing. So you would go and say, can we do this? And you say, well, we're going to be doing the diversity and inclusion thing. So we have to understand that. And uh, I want to present this award to uh, Think Now. It's from uh, Aguilar Productions and our award committee, our sponsors, and, and several other group, uh, members of the, of the committee. Uh, in recognition of your outstanding achievements in the multicultural market industry in the United States, and we want to present you with the Multicultural Marketing Achievement Award. Well, thank you. Can, can we get a, a photo? Of you? Yeah, let's get a photo over here. Let's get over here, yeah. Good. Hey, good. There we go. Well, give us a few words if you oh, could. Well. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, thank you very much, Rick, for this, uh, for this great honor. And, and I will um, accept this on uh, behalf of the two founders, Mario Carrasco and Roy Kokoyacek. Uh, I was having a hard time with that last name. <laughs> but they founded this marketing research company back in 2010. And they built it on a vision of creating a research company for uh, companies that really wanted to do multicultural research the right way. And they have built um, an outstanding company of research veterans. And I'm really happy to be part of this team. And um, again, thank you, Rick. This is a, a, a great, great honor. And I'm sure that the folks back home will be thrilled to hear that Think Now has been recognized like this. So thank you very much. Oh, great. Great.